Welcome to the Himalayas. <laughs> Abominable. No, 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 don't worry. It's Lemon. <laughs> you know, he, uh, I've already told you this before, but you know the guy. Um, the guy? Yeah, the guy. The guy? Yeah, yeah the, guy. the guy. Yeah, the guy. From I Wanna Be the Guy. I wanna be the guy. I was um, thinking. You know, uh, um, what are you thinking? I was thinking, like, sp- the the oh so incredible Spy Kids 3D, the movie. It's oh, like, he's not you're the, the guy. guy. He's like, you're the guy. It's like, he's not the guy. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking Frodo comes out. It's like, I am. <laughs> Dude, is that why they called the guy from I Wanna Be the Guy the guy? Was that a I, I don't, I don't Spy know. Kids reference? That'd be I, crazy. I, maybe. I mean, that movie was honestly god-awful. It went yeah. from, like, two, gr- two great ones. The first one was actually just weirdly awesome. And then the second one was actually pretty good. And then the third one was just the classic case of what the fuck were you on making this movie? <laughs> yeah, when your movie literally needs to stop to give the audience instructions for what to put on their face, it's usually not the best <laughs> film. Oh, yeah, I remember. Welcome to the Double D Experience, by the way. We are, um... Sometimes 1D, which we will be in a, for a couple of weeks. Sometimes 2D, but never 3D. 3D. Ah, ah, get it? You see what I did there? Spike is 3 is 3D movie. I was going to say, like, um, I'm pretty sure both of us are, like, not haters of 3D, but more so just, like, we never really cared for it. And I think the was vast such majority. a trend. That thing was yeah. a trend before internet trends were a trend because it was a trend Central. before yeah. social media trends came in. So it was a trend before those trends came in. So it trended before there were trends. <laughs> well, it didn't travel the way like social media kind of like has no. like information flow around those times. It's like if you saw it th- be a thing, that just meant that practically everywhere else was just going to have it as like a thing. <laughs> and- it meant that one, the movie's ass. <laughs> And it's relying on being like, wow, he can't be right it, at me. It, it was the one thing that I always thought, though, that those 3D glasses from back then was better than the ones we have now. Yeah. The red and blue did look kind of dope as like a bit of a, like, people and, wore those it unironically. Was an aesthetic. Yeah. Those things were a period piece. Like yeah, you they could, really were. Like, they were never a fashion statement like they very briefly were in the 80s where like mm-hmm. people had like those visor, those futuristic visor looking yeah, glasses. Yeah. But they were also such a vibe because they don't make them like that anymore. Now they just got like the blue light tint inside of them, like yeah. normal ones that you still can't even really... You can't wear them over your normal glasses, but I just got these lenses and these were like $400, so I'm not fucking... Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not scratching course, these course. shits worth. I'm not scratching these shits worth nothing. But the only time I can remember from 3D movies that I remember as a kid playing with my friends in the theater and being like, "Look, it's like our hands out, gonna grab it," was uh, from the Polar Express. You remember that, that was, movie? That was in 3D. Yeah, uh, I saw that in an IMAX theater. Where Don't Tom Hanks looks fucking like you know a a like a CGI monster. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's the it's the movie where he's all like. Hot, hot, yeah, we got it. Hot, hot, oh, we got it. Hot, hot, yeah, we got it. Hot, hot, hot oh. chocolate. <laughs> Say whatever the fuck you will about Tom Hanks. Oh, Say whatever God, the fuck man. you will about Polar Express. That, that hot chocolate song, fucking banger. He's actually that not a bad singer. A- no, no, like Tom Hanks. Yeah, is he's just, not. A, he's not a bad singer at all. Like, yeah, t- Tom Hanks is great. You know, conspiracy theories aside, because there's a lot. There's some like red pill people who hate. <laughs> there's red pill people who hate Tom Hanks because he was on Epstein's list. Oh, and but you got to remember, not everybody on Epstein's list I, went to the island. There were people. Those were just people who he wanted to come with him. I, I would like to think it was like a Forrest Gump moment for him, where he had no idea why he was invited there. Like right. you know how like every time Forrest is in anywhere. He looks as if he has no idea where he's at half the where, time. Where, where are they going? He, like, he just like gets off the copter and he's just like, Jenny, where, where are we? <laughs> like he just sees the plane taking off for Epstein Island. He's like, where are they going? <laughs> Why are those girls so young? <laughs> Dude, oh my god. There was a picture on Reddit of a passed out girl on Jeffrey Epstein's lap that I was just like, it was looking oh. through on Reddit. And I, I wanted to barf. I felt oh, actually physically no. sick seeing that shit. But there's people who just, like, think, who say, like, no, Tom Hanks is confirmed pedophile now because he was on the list and stuff. But, again, like, the list was not all people who went to the island. They were just people who Epstein wanted to go with him. And in my heart of hearts, I mean, I think we all want to definitely want to believe that 
Tom Hanks is not a fucking pedophile. I, even, I think we all <laughs> really don't want that to be true. One person I would have loved to see on that list would have been Bill Burr. And like if what? people, no, 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 because for one, if people tried to like out Bill Burr as like a fucking pedophile, he'd honestly would unapologetically and unequivocally tell them to go fuck themselves. And like, it would probably be like one of the funniest things to ever happen to a comedian. Just because it's like for one, we already know like the type of person Bill is. And he's a very like uncomplicated sort of man when it comes to like what his morals are. And he's pretty vocal about all these, like, Hollywood yeah. fuckwits. And, like, he also, like, you know, went off pretty loudly, I think, during, like, that whole trial. And also by the time of, like, uh, Epstein's uh, death. And for the most part, like, you know, just seeing him, like, even being attempted to be, like, TMZ'd like that by the public. And him probably just giving whatever the massachusetts equivalent of the middle finger is like on social media would honestly just be so funny just because of like the juxtaposition of it all it's like epstein wanted him there but he probably wasn't gonna come anyways like you know bill he probably wasn't gonna go yeah but like and that list apparently is like you know from at least what you said about like tom hanks was like the moment you're on that list like oh you're a you know, you're a pedophile. It's like, I'm pretty sure half the people that were on that list, probably for one, had no idea they were even on that list to begin with. Yeah. And like, <laughs> it would just also be like some cosmic sense of irony that fucking of all people, like the most straight laced, angry motherfucker that we know as Bill Burr. Very counterculture, like the last person who would ever give in to the Hollywood regime in that kind of way. Very outspoken about it, like Dave Chappelle is and stuff yeah. like that. He's the last person who would ever do that, minus the fact that Bill Burr is not a fucking pedophile. But it would be great for the one reason that the, the questions, the viewer questions, would literally take over the Monday show. Oh. <laughs> every fucking that show would be ruined if he was on Epstein's list because every fucking week be like all right we got we got another fucking question like, like just bring it in no, we got another one question say? we, got, a, we got another question here well, all right uh what does this one say um uh, why were you bill. on why were you on Epstein's list you fuck ginger bald fuck <laughs> It's like, God, for the last fucking time, he throws like a temper tantrum. <laughs> yeah. like, throws it down. That's why, yeah, because this is about angry he'd get. Like, of course, like we all know deep I didn't inside that fucking island. We all know deep inside, like he would never go. But it was, just, it's just seeing his anger, like his brand of anger, is just so funny to me. Like the fucking unbridled rage that he has. You hear yeah. Nina in the background? He's like, like, did you get another fucking Epstein question? He's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm fucking, I'm fucking done. I'm, I'm fucking done with the show. Fuck, Fuck this you. Pod Fuck this podcast. Fuck all of you. Ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I need to work on... I actually haven't listened to Bill Burr in a long time. I need to work... Because that was a horrible Bill Burr impression from what I was he, doing. Like, that wasn't good at all, but I wasn't... I need to listen to it calm. again. He's a lot more calm now. That's well, he legit thing. went to anger management, didn't he? Because, like, yeah, his shtick is hilarious, but it's like... Yeah, you nah. got a lot of anger in you. You should it, probably work on this. It's the same it, thing with, like, those fat yeah. comedians who, mm -hmm. like, their whole shtick is being fat. Like, Gabriel Iglesias. People were, like, mm -hmm. giving Gabriel Iglesias, like, shit about him losing weight. to be like, oh, but you're not gonna be fluffy anymore. You, like, you, you, you're not gonna be fluffy anymore. Like, your stick is gone. It's like, guys, I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> he straight up said that yeah, in his yeah. specials. Like, if I stay this big... I'm going to die. Like, yep. full stop. Like, I, I have to lose weight. And he lost a ridiculous amount of weight. And he's still huge. That's how fat, yeah. he, that's how fat he was. Well, but the thing is, is that, like, you know, the whole... Sometimes it might even be too late. But, like... Well, it was they, late for some. I remember John... Uh, what was his name? That fucking comedian. John P uh, John Pinnett. You remember him? Pinnett? John Pinnett. He was a very huge comic. Liter literally huge. Like, I'm saying he was very fat. And a lot of his humor oh. was, oh, yeah, was yeah. weight jokes and stuff. It, yeah, it got, got him. Some, he had a heart attack and he died. Yeah, he's and got some jowls. Holy shit. Oh, he yeah. had some jowls. Holy he's one shit. of those fat guys where you can look at him and like, you know what he would look like if he wasn't fat. He reminds me. You know what I mean? Like, he's one of those fat guys where you look at him and be like, oh, I, here's what you would look like if you like had the weight of like an average person. 
he reminds me of um one of the guys uh from Power Rangers. It was a bulk and skull. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. bulk, yeah, this guy was bulk, like for sure. Like fucking one of my hell. Favorite bits from him. He just says hiking is a walk that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is <laughs> it's a walk that sucks <laughs> but yeah same, same thing with you know, same thing with Burr we were talking about Burr you know like really like his anger is like a big part of his shtick like I'll never forget like that bit where or that, that whole set where he just shat on Philadelphia because they booed that starter comic off the crowd because they're Philadelphia and they were fucking toxic yeah yeah and he was just going off on them he rightfully so into them but even he recognized mm. like yeah this is part of my shtick but it's a problem. I don't want to yell at my wife like this. I don't want to yell at my kid mm. because, like, or see the them, most... or have them see like me yell at yeah. someone like in that way. Yeah. Because the most minute things piss me off. Like my fucking toast came out a little more burnt. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but all of it comes from a like a sense of relatability, though. Oh, yeah. Because like he is able to kind of put to words. The fucking outrage we feel for everyday shit that we just can't like he does it in a way that I still like like wish that I could mm-hmm. and like it's honestly the one of the reasons why like I find him just so like uh like that I just uh, I adore him it's kind of gay but like, I guess like oh god come I know, on I'm kidding I'm kidding okay but more so you like that I really you. like. I, I really just you like him, him as yeah. I really admire him as a comedian, and I think yeah. even just as like a person, because again, like it's very hard to put to words again the outrage you feel on everyday life, because everyday life, as I think even The Sopranos has kind of put it in a not so. I'm gonna try to put this in a not so like kind of dreary way, but it has a way of kind of like knocking you down, like a lot. Yeah. And even though it's just kind of like every day to day things, it has a way of just kind of like basically like kicking you. Like even while you're down, it has like a way of just kind of kicking you. Oh, so, yeah. So like hearing someone actually being able to like put all of that sort of like anger that we all have, or maybe not even like anger, but even just like frustration, putting all that frustration into words and like actually like, you know, talking about it in a way that like, we could all understand, which is, I think, a lot of comedians, uh, honestly, but at least for him, it's just more so, like, I wouldn't say it's more on brand with him now than it was before, mm-hmm. because at least now, his is very much, like, at least the way his comedy has been lately, it's still very much, like, screaming Bill, sure, mm-hmm. but there is a very much, like, an older, like, quiet wisdom behind all of the shit that he says. And it's, like, all the shit that apparently, like, you know, we are not allowed to say. But he's gonna say it anyways, because it's, like, fuck you and fuck any of those norms. Like, I'm gonna say what I want to, like, say. Because it's, for one, most of the time it is true. Like, the one little bit he did during his um, previous uh, special, where he talked about how women failed the WNBA. Yeah. And it was basically, like, everything that he said was, I felt very true. Because, for one... Again, as to his point before, a lot of us, practically probably, I bet, like, 75% of the entire population of this entire country do not watch the WNBA. I can't name a single WNBA player. Other than the one that got imprisoned and jailed in Russia and got the whole prisoner exchange. Like, that's the, but that's what I mean. That's the only, but that's the only one that anyone would know. And after that, do you know any of, like, the ones on the, on those team rosters? I guarantee you, you cannot name a single one. And and then his whole point about, like, you know, how it is not my job to give a fuck about your problems. <laughs> and, like, it sounds very mean, obviously. And I'm not here to try to, like, break down, like, Bill's comedy. But, like, isn't hasn't there been a time when someone told you that you should care? And that is exactly what you just wanted to say to them. Like, I, I would say <laughs> that that wasn't the very, maybe the way he phrased it isn't the way that came into my mind. But there's a part where I'm just like, oh, get me out of here. Y'all listen to me last week when we were venting mm. about Disney and like those uh, those film reviewers we were talking about. Yeah, we yeah. had a very like big like discussion, if not borderline <laughs> argument at times about feminism. So if you want to hear me say that I agree with everything Bill Burr said there too, fuck yeah, I did. 
for the mm. most part. Uh, I, you know, they're like I mentioned last week, there was that lecture we were in where there was that one woman who was just cutting the other panelists off because she was talking about how much, just to talk about how much she loved working with women and how repressed she clearly was at her age and stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she's probably been through some shit, but at the same time, sometimes you got to think it's certain situations. It is my job. And a lot of the, most of the time, it's not my job to give a fuck. 90% of the time is not your, it's not your problem. Yeah. Cause like, like Bill Burr, like, here's the thing, you know, in a way, what he said in that rant was very feministic actually, but it, it, no, no, listen, listen to me. Like not in like the, stupid modern way that social media likes to project okay. where like it's like misandry what i'm saying is that like what he was saying was actually a really good way for women to go forward he was talking about like if women supported each other doing a collective cause together like in the wnba or like women's soccer and stuff like that or if more not just sportsy women but casual women actually supported it instead of just pretending mm -hmm. they give a shit about it just to like yeah. validate it on existence. social media mind you like that's yeah. where they usually always go and like like uh, wave the flag it's like oh women's sports in general yeah. Ooh. yeah to directly quote mm -hmm. burr when he said if y'all could support like these women working together to support a common cause the way you support a fat chick who is no longer <laughs> like the way you support a fat chick who is proud of her body and is therefore no longer a threat to you <laughs> that that league would be doing better numbers than the wnba because well, the, the, the current true. wnba like yeah you said Oh, no, 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 my yeah. bad, the NBA, fuck, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn it, I messed it up, that, that it WNBA won't be would be better doing better. than the NBA, it won't be better than the NBA, but it will be better than how they are now, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, like, but what you understand is that what he said was, like, in a twisted sort of very man way, was a feministic message, because he was saying this is the actual way for y'all to yeah. move forward. You but then he I mean? also, but then he also said that y'all just can't work together. Y'all yeah. <laughs> don't want to. Y'all want to destroy oh, no, each other. Said, like, you know, talking about like how new age feminism in a lot of ways, y'all are pretty much just shooting yourselves in the foot and calling and each other. <laughs> yeah, and each other, straight up. And if anything, Dennis, you got to understand. It's the same thing I said last week about how Ken being Kenuff is a positive man message because Barbie told him something he needed to fucking hear, basically. Yeah. It's the same thing with Bill Burr, the opposite end of the spectrum, literally a man telling some women what they need to hear for them to move forward. And in that way, it's a feministic message. We all want the same thing at the end of the day, my man. It's just know, sometimes you just, you gotta spit facts and say like, this is how you have to get to it because you're fucking doing it wrong. I would love to, I, I actually don't know, he probably never watched it, I guarantee it, but like, I would have loved to like, hear his opinions about Barbie movie. <laughs> I wish he would, honestly. That would be interesting to hear. He probably will just say, like, yeah, it just wasn't my cup of tea. <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> just be like, hey, it's hey. I didn't, I didn't really like it. Yeah, you know, fucking Nia, you know, drag, yeah, yeah, drag exactly. He's gonna it. talk about how, like, oh, yeah, like Nia was, like, just sitting in her seat, like, just going, oh my god, yeah. yes, me. <laughs> I want to see a baby movie. This girl voice. So now, is you know, I gotta buy some fucking tickets. <laughs> And take fu my fucking daughter. His fucking <laughs> fuck. I lost my train of thought. His what do you call it? Um, gotta tell you, don't know what this bitch's deal <laughs> was. Shit. You know, she walks into this movie. She's like, she's a fucking doll. Oh, his fucking like fake female voice is <laughs> it's so fucking like. It's, it's like so he worked, on point. Like, he worked to make it as insultingly sounding as possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like he wanted it to sound as obnoxious as humanly possible. Like, yeah, yeah, take me to the Barbie movie. And, and essentially, it's like y'all heard this voice everywhere you went. Every one of you have heard this, man and woman. You've heard this, and it's just like it, he like purposely does it in a voice that just makes you want to like strangle the person, you know. <laughs> Like, or they're him. annoying. Or him, depending or on what's him, yeah, you, yeah. But it's even, you know, just we're talking about, like, even, you know, certain girls. It's like, when you hear their voice, you just kind of, like, already your eyes are, like, rolling to the back of your head. You're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> it can go to anybody, really. But it's like, you know, you hear some people talk, like us, <laughs> for troning on for an hour and a half. Don't some of you all just go, like, oh. God, this guy stinks. Nope, everybody, everybody loves my voice. Really? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, Mr. Hollywood out here. Mm. <laughs> but, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, no. I'm kidding. But but I, 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 I know I'm what just, you mean. Where you yeah, just like, like shut the fuck up. Yeah, like Two it's, fucking dickheads don't know what it, you're talking about. 
Why it's do you like, even have a podcast? I even wonder, like, what is your two... Like, I'm going to say two. Is there two types of voices that people have that you just absolutely hate? I will say the two types of voice that I very much dislike would be that very much obnoxious counterculture nerd voice. If that makes like, any actually, sense. Actually, like... Yeah, like sort, of, like sort of like um like a a higher more higher pitched nasal version of Ben Shapiro. Oh, like, gonna, yeah, it, I was gonna say it, Ben Shapiro. It, like, yeah. it makes me hate their voice. But like, ah, and this is why every fucking woman is such a problem in today's society. Like, he sounds like a repressed gay dude. If that makes any sense, <laughs> who hates with a really women hot because, sister? Yeah, like, who, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who's like in denial with himself and like takes it out saying like, "Oh my god, if all women would just stop being fucking whores, maybe like we could get men to the right place they're supposed to be in society." Like, like one of those like basically that video essay voice that like some guy who just makes YouTube videos every week like his opinion fucking matters or something. Yeah, yeah. and like he just keeps going off that voice. I hate when because they're also saying obnoxious things like those red pill ish like YouTubers like again like the higher pitch ben shapiro voice basically mm. where it's just like you know the kind of voice that pretty much says like yeah i talk shit about women i hate all women women are the problem with everything in society every single week but my mom still does my laundry <laughs> like that kind of voice so i'd say that's the voice i probably hate the most in a man so the other voice i hate yeah. i gotta i gotta give fair credit where credit is due I'm not going to do two man voices or my least favorite. I have to go with my, with my least favorite woman voices now. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. Valley Le girl? Least favorite. I like, no, I like Valley girl. Oh, actually. okay. Oh, okay. Wait, 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 what's Valley girl? Because when you I'll, said like, Valley girl, I thought of like, I, I, think, know, I, thought, I think I thought of it like, wrong. Very like just pretentious ass, like still in high school white girl who oh, like that. That, yeah, like cheerleader oh, that, then, type and shit then, like that. Yeah, that's probably mine. For some reason, when you said Valley Girl, I thought I my I thought the wrong V word. I heard Vermont, and I actually <laughs> love women. What the fuck? No, 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 listen, because you said valley, so I was thinking about literal valleys as well, opposed like to rich kid valley. California. No, because I, oh, you think in California, basically. I was thinking of Vermont. I love that accent on a woman. I think it's adorable, but they go like, oh, sure, bud. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, oh, sure, bud. Ain't that okay, like Nova yeah, Scotian? for sure. Ain't that like Nova Scotian? They're, they the Canadians, actually, like, the real rural-ass Canadians? They have some similar intones, those voices do. I actually really appreciate a low voice on a woman, not only because it's, like, sexy, where it's like, oh, your name is Scarlet, isn't it? You're like that woman. In the, <laughs> you're like that woman in the red dress. You know, like that Jessica Rabbity voice. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Like, the whole one, aesthetic. It's like your voice is still female, but it also sounds like you smoked like twelve packs a day. <laughs> but you, but like you benefited from it, minus the tumors. Fair. I, yeah. I was thinking like, um, <laughs> Mrs. Monarch. Yeah, well, dude, the, Mrs. Monarch is the like the exception that proves the rule. Because hers yeah. is, like, not even sexy sounding. Like, they initially made her voice. And her voice sounded a little different at the beginning of the show, where she sounded even more, like, gross, like, 60-year-old, like, three-pack-a-day old mm -hmm. lunch lady voice, yeah. basically. But then the show did an amazing thing where, like, she's just so fucking sexy. And, like, the way, like, her <laughs> demeanor, forget, like... the way she, you, you do forget, yeah. like, completely. And it's amazing. If anything, the monarch's voice is more annoying. But it's supposed to be. <laughs> But anyway, um, as far as the voices go, like, there's, I like that low voice on a woman, and I appreciate it, because I'm a very low-voiced man myself. Mm -hmm. You know, my, one of my ex-girlfriends, like, she was an alto singer, basically, and, like, mm -hmm. we both had low voices, and we had solidarity, me and her, for that, because it's like, yeah, we can't sing the high parts, we're never the lead in the chorus, and fuck mm -hmm. you, without, without us, you're nothing. Without us to harmonize under you, you sound like shit, so fuck you, it was very counterculture-y <laughs> in that way, too. So I would say the least, I'm droning on, I'm sorry. Yeah, I would yeah, say my right. least, my least favorite woman voice probably like the California, like, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You're, you're, you're so weird. You're gonna be on Gawker. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that fucking obnoxious ass voice. Like, I could never be around somebody, like, with that kind of voice, let alone to date it. I don't even have to ask you. That's your least favorite female voice too, right? Uh, you know... To an extent, yeah, but during my, uh, like, close to, like, I think my uh, college years and even a little bit of my high school years, like, I was around a lot of people, right? And, mm -hmm. like, especially when I was working uh, at my uh, parents' store in New York, and a lot of people from everywhere around the world would, like, come through, like, fucking everybody, essentially, uh, through that business. And we got a lot of people 
who like were who all ranged from like the most pleasant and polite sounding like per like people ever to just the most like if I could throw you out this store, but I can't because you're 300 pounds, I would. Like, <laughs> like it's like, I think Valley Girls are definitely up there. And I think another voice that I, I think I really, like, I think, it's, it's sort of weird for me because Jersey accents. And I'm talking, like, real heavy on the diction, as, like, you're saying, right? But listen, it's because, like, I hear it on TV, right? And, like, oh, yeah, like, I think that's cool. Or, like, you know, it's... It just sounds, like, you know, very, like, Italian. Very, like, you know, just Jersey, in a way. And, like, this is just speaking to, like, all, like, the, um... Second generation, or even first generation, like, you know, uh, white people who, like, think live here. No matter where you're, like, from. Even, I've even heard, like, Polish... Uh, guys like talk like this and everything. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, but your flag is Poland. <laughs> like, I see it in your fucking car. It's, and it's, it's a Jersey thing. Yeah, it's a Jersey thing, right? It's a Jersey thing. But like, when I hear it in real life sometimes, and like, it's only if the guy's a prick, like, only if like the people are assholes uh, who are talking in that voice. Like, because I met a couple of people who, like, they talk like that, and, like, they're some of the greatest people I've ever met, right? It just all depends on the person, I guess. This is not saying, like, I hate this voice, like, in particular, but this is more so just kind of, like, based on circumstance and, like, on who's speaking in it. And nothing, I think, is worse than when you're a douchebag and you talk like that. It just ups your douche level by, like, a million somehow. Well, like, Dennis, a normal the... guy who just talks like, oh, yes, I go to Goldman Sachs and I swipe my credit card every day. And, like, if that guy was a douchebag, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, thanks. Like, whatever. Like, something about, like, hearing a guy who, like, who fucking talks like this and he's gonna diss your mother. And hearing that guy being a douche somehow sounds just a million times worse you're and talking like, about the fucking the situation you're talking about poly poly d if there's the a situation fucking, is about to be that i'm about to sock you in the fucking face if you you're don't talking shut about up that, that typical that typical fucking douchebag who like sounds like that is almost as if it's like a fake jersey accent like i've never actually fucking heard anybody talk like this in my life and i gotta tell you dennis it's funny that you fucking said that because when you weren't doing the voice, you said talk. Yeah. I don't know if you heard yourself. I know, like you, I, you, I know. I, I you said myself. it because you, you don't understand. Thing. We do that sometimes because you and I both yeah. grew up in Jersey and I grew up around people like that. You yeah. know, my, my family's from fucking Long Island. Like, that. Oh. I, grew up, <laughs> I grew up around, uh, like, and we're Italian. Mm. We, I grew up with people who talk like that. Like, mm -hmm. both fucking stop. And it, it, it came out my fucking mother sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. she will do that. And it's yeah. funny. You, you almost, My I sister feel, says dog sometimes. No matter how, like, whitewashed you get, you keep that shit around. Like, it still comes out every now and then, I feel. I'm not depending even talking about, like... Depending on the like, person and depending on their particular emotion. Yeah. Because, like, that, like, when they get angry is when that shit really comes out. And let me just also add another thing, that if you hear that voice coming out of a person who is honestly, genuinely, like, kind... And, like, just very warm. It just also, again, ups their, like, friendly, like, meter, like, a ton. Hearing a guy saying, hey, 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 take, like, you know, take some, take some extra sodas. And, like, something like that, even. Like, hearing that is, like, just, wow. Like, you know, this guy, this almost feels like, you know, the uncle you never had, I guess. <laughs> like, you know, you know what? This guy's been around, and with how long he's been around, he chose to be a good person. Mm. You know, so even though Compared he has that to, accent that could be yeah. associated with anger and is stereotyped mm -hmm. with mobsters and shit, you're like, you're a fucking good man. I you're also feel, dude. I do feel bad for Italians in one respect because like all of the great movies that we know them for, all of the great ones are practically all mob movies. Well, that's why I hate which, people who claim to like love Italian culture and understand Yeah, and then they like, oh yeah, they, I love The Godfather. I love yeah, the fucking Donnie they Brasco. They watch The Sopranos and like, that's it. And it's like, don't get me wrong. Like some of those things do have to do with like, you know, Italian culture and stuff. But yeah, it has to yeah. do with a very stereotyped Italian-American culture. Because mm -hmm. to say all Italian-Americans are fucking mobsters... That's a little prejudice sounding. It's, that sounds yeah, a little it really is. Racist, like, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, there's a certain pride to it, but like, 
I'm there the same was... way with what you said about that Jersey accent. Like, that's mm. how I feel about the Vermont girl that I talked about. I like, mm. like, I get like when I hear a seller, like, oh, sure, bud. Like, she's got that little <laughs> attitude, but it's like, it's cute. First of all, it's, it's not cute. it's not threatening at all. And, and it's not threatening, <laughs> but I can tell you're also tough. You've seen some shit and you've chosen to be a good person with it. And like, you own who you are in that way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I grew up around people who fucking talk like this, but if I fucking tried to do it, like I tried to make it my accent, yeah. I, I would be no fucking different than any of those like snooty valley white bitches who fly <laughs> to London and then come back and say, oh, I picked up the accent. Listen, I picked up the London accent. I was there for a week and somehow I picked up a fucking accent. I'm so cultured. <laughs> And in case you're wondering how bad my British accent was there, I was doing it poorly on purpose. That's the joke. I, I, I'm sorry I had to explain that to you, don't British, fuck. you're not you British. You listen to the Double D experience anyway. How intelligent can you be? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lukewarm temperature at best. But, at best. Uh, well, I guess, yeah. Like, I think the, uh, I don't know, like, accents in general. Like, hearing someone being, like, an asshole in, like, an English accent, it's just like, bro, I'm a, I'm a, like, even know i'm gonna like fuck all the women in your country like the same way american soldiers fucked all your women when they came in world war ii Whoa. <laughs> like, like it's just like it, like it honestly like you know it, i remember hearing about this and I, I honestly like at first thought it was just like a meme but it was actually true like when yeah. the americans like actually came to england uh in preparation like for the invasion and even just like having um having them stationed there because yeah. uh they were it was still like even after um sea lion they were still kind of afraid that the germans might attack even though like the threat was essentially over they were still worried like eh, it could happen so let's just at least have some more troops here yeah because uh, at least by that time there was more troops down in north africa than you know up in england but come time for around the invasion for normandy a lot of them were up there and uh yeah, a lot of them were just straight up fucking, fucking all busy. the English women. They were just I fucking them all. Can fucking blame them. <laughs> Seriously, because they're just know, like, no, okay, I, know, that's I, why. Could, I could die tomorrow. We don't know yeah. what's going to happen. Um, to the and women, also, they're mm. attractive because it's like, they're foreign. Yeah, Foreign exotic. people are always attractive. Yeah. There's always, like, in every sitcom ever made, or every even cartoon ever made, there's this, foreign, get the there's pussy, this man. foreign guy, yeah. or this foreign girl that comes in, that the guys or the girls completely swoon over, and the protagonist is like, I'm not jealous. Why would I be jealous of this <laughs> Frenchie McFrencher fucking sin? And every, every kid show on the planet does that. Danny Phantom did it. There's an episode towards the end where, like, a guy comes from... Uh, French Zakistan and like <laughs> rizzes up Sam and shit and Danny's like no 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 bro no 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 I'm not, I'm not jealous and I think he turned out to be a ghost or some shit or uh, you know <laughs> you know what it is but like whatever the, you everyone does that and it's even like true in real life it's reflective foreigners can be attractive a girl comes to a new girl comes to town with the accent every guy's like oh yo like, oh shit. And I'm gonna rizz her up. <laughs> it's the same for both genders. Yeah. And even, like, talking World War II in the Pacific. If you remember mm. the Pacific, the miniseries, at the end, there's the dude that, uh, there's the American soldier that hooks up with the, that Australian girl. Oh. I, I, I didn't know, I didn't watch it, but I, okay, I did not know that. And huh. that's completely true. That actually yeah. happened. It's abs there's always an element of, like, sexual attractiveness where it's like, you come from a foreign land, you're different. Teach me your ways, and <laughs> in I, bed. I, 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 yeah, I knew that's what I was gonna say. And it's like, and I do mean all of your ways. <laughs> it's very common, to, like, to go no, to another no, yeah, country and be like, oh, yeah. like, how often am I gonna see an American here? Like, some German girl. Like, how often am I gonna see an American here? You're, oh, you're here for a week on vacation, and she's just yeah. like, I'm gonna rock your world yeah. because you might die tomorrow. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> take off those pants, big boy. <laughs> I'm gonna show you Rocktoberfest right now. I think I remember during World War One, even um, when the Americans were stationed in France, there was actually a PSA from I think Army Command, or it might have been the government, saying like <laughs> they lying. were basically saying like, <laughs> no, 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 lying. no, no. They were basically saying like <laughs> keep the fucking to a minimum because all you motherfuckers are getting venereal disease and we need y'all at the front line. <laughs> So stop lying. fucking. No, I'm not. I'm being serious. They were oh straight up saying, God. stop fucking. That's so fucking funny. Holy like, it's, shit. It, it got so bad. It got so bad that the fucking both command, army command, and also the government had to intervene. And they actually straight oh. up like put up punishments oh. uh, for if you were caught in bed with like a French uh, prostitute. Oh you get it. You get in mad trouble. Yeah. 
Having a government PSA telling you to stop having sex is the funniest thing of all time, and especially from the fucking French government. It was no, it was actually the American, the American uh, government. Oh, it was never when, mind. This okay, was that like makes 19, a lot more yeah, sense. It was when I was 1918. About to say, the French, the French invented nah, the menage nah, 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 nah. a trois. Like they're, they're they never going to tell, gonna this tell them. They, they were not going to tell their ladies. They're probably greatest export by that time to ever tell them like, oh yeah, like stop opening your legs for all these soldiers. It's getting I mean, really bad right now. Th this is like, going to sound real misogynistic, but they were certainly more effective there than in battle. <laughs> you know, their fucking French nature to quietly <laughs> surrender. <laughs> they were they were way they were way better at quietly surrendering that fucking that, <laughs> that fucking ass and that dick, depending on whatever you're doing there. This is the same country that we're not stereotyping here, because listen to us for a second. This is the same country that literally had to bust that shit. they had yeah. to bust a, a, a quarantine event big in 2020 during covid they had mm. to like send a bunch of people home like for because they were breaking quarantine they were out way past curfew because they had a curfew during covid and shit because they were breaking up an 88 person orgy <laughs> 88 people god <laughs> damn <laughs> France really be known what, to I like, need to know what the male to female ratio was in there. Uh, I'd like to think it was like th three to five. Yeah, because you remember the orgy that Danny Sexband got invited to, and he said like I was getting invited to like. A, oh yeah, um, yeah, and there was like it was, uh, like it was this a whole, uh, like, process, and it yeah, it was a twenty-five person orgy with six men and nineteen <laughs> women. <laughs> like holy shit, <laughs> the pressure, <laughs> the pressure won, and also I'd be in fear of my life the whole time because just the fucking percentage of probability of catching something well, that's at why the he end didn't of all it. of that. He said there yeah, was a main like, reason he didn't do it besides the fact that he was like an orgy. I, like, ugh. I even like to think though, it's like even if you were invited, not even saying like us, but like even if you, let's say, were invited, right? Just talking to anybody here. Even if you were invited, right? And it's like, this is your penis talking initially. Yeah. I was like, yo, bro, I can't wait. Like, I can't wait to fuck all these women. And if you're bi, it's like, I can't wait to fuck everybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, even after that, right? Like, you do a little post nut clarity. I guarantee you, you're going to have second thoughts. Like, not even just because of the reasons that we said of like, oh, like, um, oh, I might catch something or like the pressure of it. It's just more so like, you know, it's like all those things combined. I, let's, I, I would say, right? Yeah. Because for one... I would, you know, I would like to think that plenty of y'all out there, all 12 of you, have never caught a venereal disease, and I would never, like, I would wish that upon my worst enemy, I truly would, but, like, if, at least for you guys, like, I, that is the last thing I would ever wish for you, and from what I've read about people who have this shit, or who've had this shit, it is not a fun experience, like, at all. It burns! What, what yeah, what is, like... I mean, people even might even say, like, oh, like, peeing and it hurting. It's like, oh, that's fine, whatever. I had kidney yeah. stones before. I'm, I, I did it. It's fine. But I'm like, but if you could avoid it, wouldn't you? You know? Not Why does something like daily do, like, peeing have to be a trial? Like, why would you put yourself in that position? <laughs> And that's why they try to vet people for orgies, where you have to fill out the forms and literally yeah. get medically background checked yep. before you do it. Like, those underground sex societies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Which, obviously, never do it. Like, if you like orgies, or if that's your thing, by all means, go for it. But, like, yeah. never do one where, like, they don't background check the oh, people. Oh, no, yeah. And, if like, they don't, don't ask them. for a health check, like, you're you're fucked. Like, yeah. you are fucked. But I, or I you totally, will be fucked. <laughs> or you will be fucked in more ways than one. But I, t I totally get what you mean. Like, also, there's the post-nut clarity aspect where once you nut once, like, you look up and, like, you're just standing in, like, a sea of bodies and sweat mm -hmm. and excrement. Or, like, or like not excrement, but, like, you know, like, uh, bod bodily, like, mm -hmm. fluids and excremental features. And you're just looking around, like, after the post-nut clarity hits and you're like, wow. <laughs> this Ooh. is, this is degenerate. This is degenerate. This is debaucherous. Like, Jesus. And that's when you're supposed to go to, like, you know, like, the... The you know, orgy the, master? The, that's when you're supposed to go to, like, the craft services table that they have in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> With still your dick, like, you're just hanging brain right there. You know, help yourself to the jalapeno poppers that they like, had. Who, help, help yourself to the fucking jalapeno poppers that Janice made. Everybody thank, Janice for, everybody thank Janice for bringing the jalapeno poppers. Thank you, Janice. Who would want to touch that food? 
truthfully. Do you like really want to like, see, like oh, the, no. you see the hey. corner of the table and there's like fucking like cum? Yeah, it's like God forbid it's like you have to like cut that cord and <laughs> you have to have that like whole section of the room like cordoned off by like security guards and shit because it's like God forbid you get like one little on a cupcake or something like that, like God forbid there's just some shrapnel that flies and it just like lands on something God forbid like Dennis, you I'm never sorry. know. You never know what's gonna happen in places like that. I'm just thinking, I'm sorry, I'm just thinking about like, you know, the breaks that they take and like in oh. the craft services table, like they're at the fucking water cooler in the office <laughs> and they're just standing there they're butt like, ass oh. naked. The dude like, yeah, man, could you believe Carol? <laughs> you know, Carol in accounting. She took three dicks at once. She's doing it over there, look. She, she does have a fat ass though, Frank. You wouldn't have like, thought it, you know, she's such a hard ass in the office, but that ass don't look so hard from my purview. <laughs> God damn, I'll tell you. And they're just like eating like fucking greasy ass food in their mouth and shit. Just, I'm sorry, just the idea of taking like a five minute like break. <laughs> like you're at like, you're at break time in the fucking office and it, <laughs> what a goddamn orgy is the funniest thing to me. <laughs> you could like, never, like you, like I even like to think. That is hilarious. Like I know what you're about to say. Don't do it with your office friends, right? Like, don't go well, to, like, the office orgy. Well, yeah. And that and also just, like, if your orgy has drugs involved, do not go. Especially that. Do not go. Yeah, like, I would just be uncomfortable. That would feel like I'm on the set of a porn. Like, everyone passing Molly and shit, like, before you, like, you know, before you start fucking? That's like, seedy. That's when it becomes, like, sex yeah. is natural, at least. That's when it starts to get seedy and shit. Like, I remember seeing a porno with, like, Gianna Michaels. That wasn't even supposed to be a porno. She was mm -hmm. just fucking some dude with, like, a group of degenerate friends, and one of them just had a camera, and they're like, oh, Gianna Michaels is fucking here, I'll film this. Meanwhile, like, they're in a whole, some hotel room, bunch of seedy-ass, like, dudes with, like, fucked up teeth and shit. Like, mm -hmm. kids, stay in school, otherwise you'll be like me. Nah, you'll be be exactly like me. You know, like like real degenerate ass like behavior. Fucking Gianna Michaels. <laughs> yeah, like at the beginning of like that movie that uh, Denzel Washington was in, like fucking plane or whatever. Like the oh whole, yeah yeah, where he's like an alcoholic. Of, yeah, the whole plot of that movie is he's an alcoholic and he's a fucking pilot. The beginning of the movie, like he's doing like coke and blow in the corner, and mm -hmm. then there's people in like the corner of the hotel room that are filming a porno at like the same time. It's like real <laughs> degenerate shit. As soon as the orgy becomes about that, count me out. No drugs or shit like that. Like make it wholesome. You know, like, you're at a fucking, like... I don't know like, if you make, can, like, though, No, man. yes, you can. Like, you're at a housewarming party, there's wine in the corner, you're all talking. I've read, like, Reddit posts and shit of people who have gone to orgies and they talk about what it's actually like. It's like being at a normal party where everyone's just vibing, having just, fun, and then... Naked. No, 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 and then very slowly, people just start touching each other and shit. Like, uh -huh. one, one, two people will get started It just takes one the person corner, to start it all, and basically. And then it just fucking a domino uh, okay, effect, okay. like, avalanche just goes in. Unless it's not, and, like, everybody, like, no, you have to show up naked, like, take your pants off at the door. Yeah, but that's the thing, like, are you really- it's like going to a Halloween party and everyone said, like, oh yeah, costume, uh, theme is, uh, naked. Disney, right? Or, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> a costume theme- costume theme is, is naked. Naked, yeah. Like, and it's like, oh, you show up with clothes on. It's the same sort of thing. Like, I, I wouldn't like want to be that guy. here, you know what I mean? Like, I can't walk in the fucking streets here like I that. I know, I know, I know. But it's just like, let's say you're that one guy, or like, you're one of the three people, because there's always at least three people. Who like show up for a party and like it's like themed and everything, but you're just going against the theme or you're like playing around it where like it's like, oh like it's Disney? Oh I I did 1930s Disney. Like I'm 1930s Donald, where he went to Nazi Germany. Like, you know, yeah. just dumb like you know, dumb shit like that. So like and like, you know, for like even just it's the same thing, is what I'm saying. Like you can't sh like an orgy is basically a no costume party. You just there, there is no costume. The costume is your birthday suit. That's what it is. Like it is literally a no pants dance. Yeah, like you can't show up with like a uh, like a morph suit of a naked man. <laughs> a morph suit. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be like the gimp of the fucking uh... mighty morphin fucking time. <laughs> it's morbid. <time. laughs> it's morbid time. It's fucking time. Imagine you go there, they're playing Morbius in the corner. Oh my gosh. And stuff. No, seriously, from what I've heard about orgies is that they start like normal ass parties just to make people feel welcome, slowly ease them into it yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And then eventually, very slowly, people just start having sex. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I'd imagine it's not like, oh, as soon as the first person comes, like, they just fuck. Like, like, can you imagine what it would be like if like, I mean, I think showing up late would be a lot better than like showing all, up early. Rude. 
Like, imagine just opening the door to the place. You just yeah. open the door and you just see, like, hear nothing but moans and slosking slounds and, like, just cheeks slapping, like, all over the place. Like, mm -hmm. I would rather just show up maybe just a little bit early before the action starts. So, so at least, like, I have the buildup. Because I honestly would be not, like, shocked if I, like, opened the door and I just saw, like, 20 people fucking. Right. But it would, it would just kind of be like, oh, like... You'd, like, be you know, a, like, you'd be taken aback, yeah, right? Like, y'all are up here. I'm not even, like, <laughs> up here yet. Like, you know, I'm just, like, I just got here, you know? Like, yeah. I need some time to process all this. And I respect what you just said, too, because I'm the same way. Like, I would also want to, like, get to know, like, some of the women there a little bit first. Not mm. only because, like, that's more polite and that's the nicer thing to do, but that would mm -hmm. also build the tension. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, you're just talking to this person like you're a normal person. You're like, I'm about to fuck the shit out of you. It's like, or even better, the two, like, this, like two girls. Talking up two girls. Well, you no, know, obviously. And, like, the thing is, you don't even have to, like, you know, like, riz up two women, like, to try to have a threesome with, like, well, what girl and her friend that you met at a bar or something. It's like, no, this is the premonition. This is the preface. The, this, the this preface. Is what you're, this is the preface. This is what you're here to do, basically. So it's like you would have to walk in and just start talking to two women with no effort. And I have been with more than one woman at the same time before, so I know what that energy is like. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like you get to skip all the formalities like that. No, like, you know, you gotta, like, build it up a little bit, like, oh, so you work in, you work in marketing. Oh, you know what, I think I've seen that place. I, it's that place that's all, like, West, <laughs> like, West Johnson Avenue, right? Like, dude, like, I had a friend who worked there once, and then you just okay. fucked the shit out of each other, like, out of nowhere after small talk. You gotta admit, that's kinda hot. The idea of that, that is pretty sexy. That is, but I also have a counterpoint, not to yours, but just to orgies in general. Right. When I'm, like, even just, like, fucking my girlfriend, right? Yeah. Like, I don't want nothing to ever touch me. Like, I take off all my clothes. I just don't want nothing on me. Like, because I sweat like a motherfucker. But if I was at an orgy and someone just randomly, like, just started fondling my balls and it's not the woman <laughs> that I'm, that I'm, uh, that I'm fucking, even if it was another woman, like, I would actually be very, very annoyed. It's like, fucking bitch, get out of here. Like, <laughs> like, shoot, shoot, shoot. It's like, like, I wait your turn. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, when, like, it would just be the most intrusive fucking thing. And, like, I know people may say, like, what the fuck, bro? Like, you're at an orgy. Like, I get that. But it's, like, the whole act of it, right? You know, I mean, that's the reason why. Like, I don't, like, I always wondered, like, does it get weird for guys who go to gangbangs? Because it's, like, the moment y'all balls touch, like, you're a little gay. I'm sorry. Like, the moment, like, you're, like, double DPing a girl and your balls touch by accident. You're a little gay, man. I'm sorry. Like, even if you power through it, I'm sorry. Like, you already crossed that line now. It's well, like, that runs just... the risk of going to orgies as well as a straight dude. Because it, yeah, most yeah. of the dudes will probably not be fucking each other, but there's probably going to be some bisexual dudes there, too. No, no, I know and that. the thing is, you'll like, be fucking you a girl, and then that woman that comes up, like, to fondle your balls, you turn around, and it's a man. And then yeah, what? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I need some consent here. Like, because, like, I think the orgies sort of just kind of invite you to just touch anything and everything. But you I'm would like, need, like, a lot of people at the orgy, then, to then have two separate rooms be like, all right, here's where the bisexual men go, straight dudes stay in here. Nah, but, you know, like, it's always just one big room. With all these filthy couches just laid out everywhere. And well, like, the, the women also filthy usually, beds. And the women usually outnumber the men in those same scenarios too, because let's, women know no, how but, to get, women know David, how to get women off better than men do, let's be real. David, I'm even saying though, if another woman that I was not even looking at, I didn't even know was there, just started randomly fondling my balls, I'm back horse kicking her by accident. <laughs> you know, it makes me think like how much at those orgies you really fuck everyone there. Like, are y'all, like, y'all have a tally board in the corner, like, on a whiteboard, like, <laughs> to see how many, board. like, to see how many people, like, fucked the most individual people here? Or do you really just go there and, like, y you stick with your group? And there's just I a bunch imagine, of other people, yeah. like, having sex around you, like, oh, I met two women here, and we just had, like, basically a threesome with a bunch of other people, like, having sex around me, you know what I mean? I feel like that's what I'd be the most comfortable doing. But you can know? you also say no? Like, can you tell a girl or even, like, let's say, like, vice versa, can you tell the, like, opposite person, like, no, I don't want to fuck you? Yes, and the reason for that is because that's what differentiates it between an orgy and what uh, criminals call a force fuck fest. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Obviously, like... if you can't say no, <laughs> yeah, I, ain't, like... I ain't going. Because that means no, no, I no. can't, that means I, I, I can't I, say I no feel... to a man. I had a feeling about that only just because it's like... You know when some people, like, you say no to? Like, the moment you do, you're an asshole? It's like, sure. oh, like, let's say, 
you know, I was fucking this one girl. And now this girl wants to, let's say, fuck me. And she's like this, let's say, like, you know, really trashy looking blonde, right? Yeah. And, like, if I just straight up said, like, nah, I think I'm good. <laughs> like, would that just completely also just destroy, like, her confidence? Well, like, here's the thing. There was one time like, in my life. It goes the same way if it was us. It's like, oh, like, can I, like, fuck you? And she says, like, no, you're ugly. Like, not, <laughs> that's not going to say, like, you're ugly. But she says, the no, you know, has its meaning, right? Yeah. And, like, you know, the moment someone says no to you, it just means, no, I don't want to fuck you. You're not attractive. Or I don't find you attractive. And, like, if, like, imagine, though, like, even if you, let's say, were, like, a decent-looking guy, right? And you would just been, like, banging, like, girl after girl at the place. And this one girl tells you just straight up, flat out, no. I don't know. It would ruin my night, kind of. Like, I'll just be like... Well, damn, fuck, I'm well, done now. Like, you still <laughs> fucked, like, five women no, in a single I night. Like, but, like, but people's egos at places like that, I listen, bet you, are Dennis, mad fragile. Let me tell you something. If they fuck nobody, then yes. But if they, they still get laid in the first place, if you're that guy, I'd be like... Unless, like, you you fall in love at the orgy and you're like, you know, the one woman I wanted to fuck with didn't. Like, oh, where'd you two meet? Like, it's the wedding party. Like, oh, we met in an orgy. Unless it's that, then, like, your ego has no merits. But... Again, uh, I'm not to not to bring this up again. This isn't to like yeah, to yeah. my own ego, but like the one time that I did make out with two women at once, uh, we were in a hot tub. It was like hot. Everybody was drunk. You know, like you know, people were just getting real like BG and shit. My girlfriend, who was by at the time, we wanted to hook up with another woman together, and then we kind of mm -hmm. just made it happen, right? So, uh, what happened is that like I had another friend who was in that hot tub, and uh, the other girl, and I call her the other girl because it was the girl I wasn't dating. It was the girl that we were both like you know tonguing and shit. Okay. Um. They were like, you two should make out, like, with my other guy friend who was in there. And Dennis, she looked at him. Oh. And said no, and then, nah, got, I'm and good. then got back up on me. Damn. Was he, and like, in earshot? You, when was I, he within he, earshot of that? He was across the hot tub. He was, no, he, dude, but he, he was, heard you? No, dude, he was watching us do this. Like, we were not alone in that hot tub when yeah, this Yeah, but, going like, down. he heard you tell her, like, oh, why don't you go have some fun with my friend over there? And did yeah. he hear them yeah. say no? Yep, 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 Damn. yep, yep, yep. <laughs> oh, what, my God. And the look in my man's face, dead. Yeah, I, I bet. Not Fucking to mention, hell. he was also the only sober person in that tub. It looked, hell. looked... I looked right in his eyes, and granted, at the time, I know he hadn't been with anybody in a long ass time. At that maidenless. point, like he was maidenless at the time, so like okay. the fact it, it, you could tell it kind of hurt him. Yeah, yeah. And he was the most integral man in the world because eventually I got uncomfortable at that party, right? Because like my girl was like my girl started making out with like the other dudes that were in that yeah, tub, yeah, yeah. and we thought she only wanted to hook up with girls together, and we weren't like dating yet, like it wasn't like official yet, like we were like sort of like in an open relationship at the time yeah, before we yeah. like really like made it official, even though it basically was at that point. And eventually I got uncomfortable because there were no other women in the tub to really do that with. And what happened is that she wanted to make out with that same friend, right? Because she was so fucking gone. And my man, who didn't get anything in that tub, who could, the same dude who got rejected by the other girl, could tell yeah. how uncomfortable I was. And he asked if I was okay. Like, are you sure? Damn, bro. And I said I wasn't because, like, I was, like, feeling existentially dreadful at the time because, like, I had never been in this situation before. Where it kind of <sighs> felt like I got cucked, but I didn't. Because I was also making out with other girls in the hot tub. I didn't get cucked. It was just very yeah. new. It was a very, very rush experience for all mm -hmm. of us. You know, a lot of adrenaline. And even though he got nothing in that hot tub, he still didn't do it. Even though I was pretty sure he liked her as well. The most integral man in the world. And he has since fucked so much since then, which he deserves because he's, <laughs> sweet, he's the sweetest guy in the world. But point is, Dennis, to, like, to answer that. Yeah, their ego would be hurt. I'm yeah. telling you that, like, I, I actually had a fucking experience. You know, we were talking about so many hypotheticals this whole time, and I actually have seen that happen before my very eyes. Jesus. Whew. Oh, yeah, you had your own little debaucherous, like, little episode way back when. Yeah. Well, that's what I was talking about. Like, it was the yeah, one yeah, time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the I almost forget, I sometimes forget about it. That's the thing. Well, like, yeah, because, like, if I, imagine I'm that douchebag who talks about it every week. I mean, there are people like that, though. Yeah, but I don't want to be They like always that. just talk about that one time they've been to an orgy, like, over and over and over well, again. Well, the thing is, it's like... also embarrassing because, like, I didn't wind up fucking the other girl. Like, I'm going to talk about the time I almost had a threesome <laughs> every week. <laughs> like, every other guy yeah. out there. Yeah, bro, I almost had a threesome. <laughs> How many stories have you heard that? Honestly. Not Jesus much. Not, not as much as you think. 
Oh my god, bro! I've been around a lot of guys. You like, probably they've, have. They've all like said something or the other. It's like I was like, oh yeah, I fucked this girl in the back of her car. Oh, like I almost got with these two chicks. So I was just gonna bang these two cocktail waitresses two at a time. <laughs> and like you know, just like just you know, just shit like you that. You youngins and, listening, that's a Godfather reference. That's why we're, I'm pe- laughing. People like, especially I think I don't know, like the way. I think also girls are slowly starting to get to the point where they're gonna like they're talking like dudes when it comes to their conquests and honestly like it's because it's like you know now okay you're like when you do stuff like that right you're not a whole like you're not a hoe no more you're an empowered woman or whatever and um like when they talk about like you know doing all of that it's like you know, they talk about it in a very like dude ish way. Oh, and, I see what you know, you it's mean. just like, he's like, yeah, we fuck. Like, it's like the same energy. It's like, yeah, like, I fucked him. It's like, yeah, we fuck. It's the same thing. It's like, like it sounds female, like the same thing. What is the woman version of a misogynist? Like, someone who objectifies men. You know how, like, for patriarchy, there's matriarchy and shit? Like, what is the man word for misogynist, basically, where they treat men like sex objects? And, you like, mean the bro- women version of, like, the uh, women version of misogyny, basically? Isn't it misandry? Misandry? Uh, I, you know what? It, I don't think misandry necessarily applies there, but it might be the closest word that in but both of our vocabularies right now to it. it, it the it ones could, that basically yeah. treats men like sex objects. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, like I know what you're talking about. Like, yeah, I get so yeah. much dick and like he wanted a relationship afterwards, but it's the, I wasn't like, about when, that. You know when what you I mean? Hear, when you hear that from a woman and you compare that hearing the same thing, the same sort of thing, like from a girl, like from a dude, like both of them. Yeah. They both sound the same. They both sound fucking obnoxious. As like, they fucking should. Yeah. Like, why is like, she a <laughs> slut? Why is she a slut for doing that and the man isn't? Yeah. He's a fucking slut, too. Yeah. Or if anything, they're just fucking annoying. Like, you're both <laughs> disgusting. You're both fucking nasty. It's I didn't ask to hear your body count. It, it, and exactly, you're talking yeah. about it at because my fucking six-year-old's birthday party. This is... What's wrong with you? The type of people where a lot of that stuff is part of their identity or they just think cringe. or they think it is and i think at least the way you know that they should go about it i'm not i'm not trying to be a preacher here but like they think the way that most people who are like very very sexually active should go about it is just to kind of like say just to not really bring it up unless someone asks if nobody asks don't say anything <laughs> Nobody cares how many fucking dicks or pussies you fucked, like, in, like, in the last, like, two weeks. Like, no one actually cares. I, re- I truly am telling you from the bottom of my heart, nobody actually gives a fuck. I feel like once and- you stop being a sophomore in high school, like, yeah, no one cares anymore, dude. And, like, those yeah. are the ones who make it up because they're literal kids and they're saying it to be cool. Or even if, like, that's the thing, even though, like, now you're older and it happened, again, nobody cares. It's like, oh, nobody you, cares. You, your brain never graduated high school. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, I'm, the only reason I was telling the story that I was telling about uh, that hot tub at that uh, back in Wisconsin mm. uh, was because it correlated to the topic we were talking about about orgies. That's why I was. That's why I brought it up. Imagine next week. Uh, next week, Dennis, we're talking about. Um, we're talking about the latest. Uh, the latest Samsung phone. Be like, yo, I think I'm gonna upgrade my phone. Like these, like flip phones are making a comeback. It's a social. <laughs> it's a social thing. And then I'm just like, I almost fucked two women once. <laughs> like you're a loser, dude. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> no one cares. Or it's like, or somehow he manages to segue in and say, Oh yeah, I fucked a girl that had one of those phones. <laughs> Oh, speaking of flipping, I once flipped uh, I once flipped a woman over on my on my dick, and we did sixty nine standing up. It was part of a threesome I had once. You want to hear about? Like, no, <laughs> like it's not even a good segue. Jesus, you know, if it was though, I have a I have a um, I have a an exception to it. Yeah, this is the last thing before we wrap up here. If I guess. you were a guy who was maidenless for a good chunk of your life, and and now you getting mad pussy. You have two weeks. No, no, no. You have two weeks to talk about whatever the fuck you did. And that's it. I don't want to hear none about it. (laughs) Nothing about it after those two weeks. You have two weeks to talk yourself up. After that, shut up. (laughs) Like, just stop talking about it. But Dennis, I totally banged George Clooney's sister-in-law. I swear. Oh yeah, I could one up you there. I fucked Ben Shapiro's sister. <laughs> oh, that actually is a solid one up because she is fucking hot as shit. Yeah, it was actually really funny how angry he got about like how everyone was thirsting over his sister. <laughs> All right, let's say 
hypothetically, you have a hot <laughs> sister. And let's say, hypothetically, for one night, you just pretended she wasn't your sister. Oh, for fuck's sake. And that's, no. let's say, hypothetically, things <laughs> Why do you have to have your hand? Because like, like, that's how he fucking talks, because he thinks he's better than everyone else. He's just like... Well, like <laughs> let's say hypothetically. <laughs> let's say hypothetically. Um, we had a person who identified as a woman who was born a man, and that person wanted to hook up with me at an orgy. God. We're done. Wouldn't well, that get so old so fast? Jesus Christ. I would, th I would say that it has. Oh. I could talk about this topic all day, but we're already running an hour. I... I'm sad that I have to wait a couple of weeks to weeks to post this one because holy <laughs> shit, this is this is the most classic double D experience. Like talk about nothing comedy episode in a while. I don't know if you noticed the last couple of episodes we we had some pretty like normal ass serious conversations about our upcoming yeah. games and shit like that. Very like the other half of DDE. This mm -hmm. week, oh no, this was this was fucking. I'm gonna study this episode like to learn how to be a better podcast host. I, I, I like this one, personally. This is a fucking good-ass episode. I like this one, too. And definitely let us know, like, how much you like this episode down in the comments below and on Spotify as well in the feedback section right below the episode. Uh, please follow us uh, wherever you get your podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. If you do listen on Spotify or even if you don't, please go on your mobile app and uh, hit the uh, go right to our podcast, The Double D Experience, look it up in the search bar, click it, and then go to the five-star button right below and give us a five-star review. It helps with our SEO on Spotify very, very much so. It helps us get further to the front page like a lot of you guys say you want us to be at. And if you listen on YouTube, which is where I know most of you do, check us out at youtube.com slash Intunis. Leave a like on the video. Comment down below your experience with orgies. <laughs> I guess, if you've or been even to like one, the, if you've the never first, been to one. Or even, like, the first time you got laid, I guess. Why not? Yeah, that's <laughs> probably more realistic. Well, actually, no. They're, actually, hold up. No, they're the audience of Double D Experience. That might not be pragmatic. Either. Or, like, the first mm. time, like, you know, a girl even said to you that, do you want me to touch it? <laughs> <laughs> Get, like, send us your middle school experiences. It's fine. Yeah. We don't care. Like, your Go middle school it. kissing experiences. Yeah. Like that. Tell us about like, your. Oh, no, we, like, we can't say first kiss. Like, that's too wholesome. We were just like talking the, about orgies. Uh, oh, no. Or the first time you, like, just accidentally cop to feel. Yeah. Tell us about the first time you got boob. But not like the I, actual. Not the actual first time you got boob. Like, the, uh, the first time that your back of your hand accidentally grazed against a woman in a subway. <laughs> or, or like, the elbow. In, like, in middle school elbow in class. Graze. Like, oh, dirt, dirt. I totally <laughs> felt it. I totally felt it, bro. Oh, my God. And uh, be sure to subscribe as well to youtube.com slash Intunist. Uh, our podcast grows because of people like you, even though me and Dennis have a lot more work on the back end. It sucks we never had that meeting before you went to Korea. Oh, yeah. And now we have to wait yeah. a few weeks. But yeah, whatever. I'll right. read the article again. We could talk. We'll be implementing some stuff. But I want my man to enjoy his vacation more than anything else. He works really hard and full homo. I love Dennis. So, you know, I want him to be, I want him to relax and have fun and experience and, uh, you know, his time back in Korea and Japan. Oh, you oh, better bring yeah, me. I'm you going, better I'm bring going you. to Weebville. Well, not I Tokyo, bought, unfortunately. I have bought you so much shit from Smash conventions. I have bought you prints. I have bought you hats. Oh, yeah, you're I have right. bought you the uh, fucking flask. You better you, get me some shit you, from Japan, my is dude. Is there something that you'd want in particular? Are you? Where are you going? Are you going to Tokyo? No, I'm not oh. going to. I can't go to Akihabara, like, unfortunately. Okay. But right, um, if I find any nerd stuff... Like, dang, I, I got you. Just okay. uh, tell me something specific if you can. We'll talk about it later because Japan has some pretty cool exclusive Pinkman merch. Uh, Pinkman. I always, Pinkman. Pinkman. I always say Pinkman. Pinkman. God damn it. It just gets Pinkman. pointed out to me so much, but I call myself that time, so it's okay. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Double D Experience. Let us know what you guys thought of this episode down below. Stay tuned next week. Um where we actually might have a guest on. There's someone's been hitting me up about being a guest on the podcast. So we might have someone do. On. Yeah, a challenger approaches. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new fighter. <laughs> oh, that was bad. I didn't get. I didn't get that down in the diaphragm enough. We new love you guys. Fighter. <laughs> Abe Lincoln. Okay. All right. Sorry. We're done. We Crippling depression. <laughs> that's mine. That's my main. Erectile dysfunction! Not my main yet, but it's getting there. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Love you guys, we'll see you next week. Bye.